This fragment of St. Luke's Gospel has always caused me pain. Well, it is not the, it is perhaps a reason to suffer, but to me at least, such a prophecy made to the Virgin that this word of pain will burst her soul causes me pain also. Pain to know what the Virgin had to suffer at the moment. It was like a pitcher of an ice cold water they poured on you on the feast day. In addition, what she had to suffer later because the prophecy was fulfilled. Simeon is naturally referring to Christ's death. Many mothers and many fathers, also friends and brothers, but many mothers and many fathers experience this word of sorrow stuck in their hearts. Their experience is precisely because of their children. Children well have the right to live their lives and also to make mistakes, but the options are not the free options, neither for them all this is paid for, nor for their parents, who see with great sadness that what they taught through their, through their lives, those principles, they have been useful to them to face some problems in life so many bad times. Their children throw them away, aside thinking, full of pride, that they are things of the past, things of old women, of grandparents, that they are useless, not only they turn away from God, but they later also get into very bad ways. looking at the Blessed Virgin, and not only, as I said, of the suffering of so many parents, looking at her, I realized, first of all, that she was fortunately was, was always accompanied her husband, Saint Olo, Saint Joseph loved her very much. He could not be otherwise, could it be? How could he not love her? How can there be no one knowing our lady thus to love her? When her husband died, her son also before her husband died, her son was with her for a long time in those days, a very long time, because they got married very young, at the age until he was 30 years old. We don't know exactly when St. Joseph died, but certainly there was a time when both of them, Jesus and Mary, were alone in the house of Nazareth. After that, it is true that she was left alone during three years of the public life of Jesus, but without a doubt, she was accompanied by some relatives in Nazareth, some sisters or sisters-in-law, and later on, St. John, who accompanied her until the hour of her assumption into heaven, until Mary's sleep. Mary was always accompanied. She was companion and accompanied. She was, was, and still is for us. She is the one who accompanies us in the path of life, like a caring mother. She is the one who watches over our steps, who gives us good advice, who correct us with tenderness, but what is our relationship with her? The sword of sorrow was caused by the death of her son. Well, but not only that, if we are her children, perhaps we are causing the sword of sorrow. If we want to accompany Mary, to accompany Mary because we love her and we truly love her, then we cannot be at the same time causing her pain. We can all tell her, I love you very much, praying in the rosary, visiting the temple to which you have a special devotion. In short, all these wonderful things we do and that we do well, and at the same time, cause her pain, because every sin not only goes through Jesus' heart, but goes through Mary's heart as well. We cannot think that Our Lady loved us, or rather, it is happy with us when we do evil. When we do evil, we offend God, we offend our neighbor, and we offend Our Lady. Love for Our Lady inevitably passes through fulfilling the commandments. 
through helping people we need, through doing good possible, otherwise it's a sentimental love, a love that is not worth much, it is worth, it is not worth any mother, any father to his son says, I love you very much, and even converse with him by kisses, well, he gives them affection. How do parents think this? How? It is wonderful to be loved by our children, but later the son is a delinquent or a drug addict or an alcoholic or a violent one for putting some things. And the mother sees that her son loves her very much and the, he tells her and gives her hugs and kisses, yes, but then he does evil, he does evil to other people, he does evil maybe to his wife, to her husband, to his children, that's evil. Well, the mother is grateful for her son's kiss, no doubt, she's grateful, but she would prefer those kisses to be accompanied by good words. Therefore, today's message, the meditation we can do, contemplating this scene of presentation of the children Jesus in the temple and the Simeon's prophecy is this, Mary must be cared for. We must take care of Mary, as St. Joseph did. We must take care of her. She needs to take care of her because she's care for us. We must take care of her by doing something essential, something she needs, something she wants. She does not want our food. She does not want our medicine. She needs our good words to avoid evil and do good. That's the best way to take care of Mary. Saint Joseph, her saint, Saint John, gave her love and gave her physical care she needed. We have to give her love and good deeds, everything else, even if it seems to us that that is something else, everything else is sentimentalism. True love passes through deeds, when there is sentiments and no deeds, he can even offense the person, in this case the Virgin, who we say we love very much. Soviet.